What gods were honored at this most sacred place in the Maya cosmology? An inscription found right here says that some heavenly beings descended once to Tikal. Did the Mayas expect the return of these visitors from the sky someday? Were the pyramids some kind of uh, receiving platforms for the gods? Or is this all just a legend? I believe it's true. The Mayas did expect the return of their gods every 52 years. If true, what did these travelers, these gods, look like? I believe we have an answer right here in Tikal. Could this be the face of a visitor from outer space? I believe that the design surrounding this face is actually the helmet of a spacesuit. Even though the head of this carving has been broken off, there are many provocative details to be found. You can see what I'm talking about on this drawing of the outline of the stone carving. I believe this is an air hose which ends in a box fitted with some kind of air bladder. I see more hoses leading either into or out of the large figure's boots. Could the ancient Mayans have been trying to depict a visitor from another planet wearing an atmosphere-controlling spacesuit? Does this statue suggest a Mayan close encounter? Is it possible the Maya misinterpreted technology they did not understand? Whatever the ancient sculptors intended, they have passed down to us a compelling mystery. But perhaps the most intriguing of all the mysteries surrounding this ancient people dates back to the very dawn of the Mayan culture. The beginning of a calendar is usually a very important event. Our calendar, for example, starts with the birth of Christ. The Maya calendar was completely different to the calendar we use today. Transposed onto our calendar, the Maya calendar begins on August 11, 3114 BC. The Mayas didn't even exist then, but their calendar starts there. But what happened 3114 BC in Central America? This is handed down precisely in the book of the Jaguar priest. It was the year when the gods arrived. This is when they descended the path of the stars. They spoke the magic language of the stars in the sky. Yes, their sign gives us certainty that they will again descend from the heavens, the 13 gods and the nine gods, and there will be a new order to what they once created. The idea that gods descended to Earth thousands of years ago is common in the mythology of many Central American cultures. I believe we see an example of this in a stunning folk ritual carried out in Mexico. These are the fearless voladores. Voladores means those who fly. After participating in the sacred dance, Five brave men climb one after the other to the top of a 100-foot-tall pole. Any carelessness, any mistake, any slight miscalculation could bring this ritual to a sudden end. But the Voladores preparation has been thorough. We've been preparing since we were 10. But for other people who aren't prepared, it's dangerous. Recreating a ritual begun 3,000 years ago, the men finally reach the top. Each man carefully winds a rope clockwise around the top of the pole. Each member of the team must carefully layer his rope with the others. The platform begins to rotate. The most dangerous part of the ritual is about to begin. The 
four men lean backward off the platform, and then they're flying. Some maintain each of the voladores reflects the points of the compass. Others say the rite is part of a larger celebration related to the movement of the sun and stars. Each one of us represents earth, air, fire, and water. The flute player represents the sun god, El Caparel. When the ritual first began, a tree would be cut down, stripped of its bark, and erected in the center of town. The ropes were made of vines or woven hemp. The length of this rope is calculated in a way that each of the four Indians circles the tree exactly 13 times. Four times 13 are 52, and this is the basic figure of the Maya calendar. Los Voladores, as they are called today, represent the descending of the gods from the sky to earth. Gods, which in my eyes were extraterrestrials and whose return were expected every 52 years. When it comes to achievements in ancient architecture, one of the most mysterious is the awe-inspiring Great Pyramid of Giza in Egypt. The mysteries surrounding the Great Pyramid are well known. The controversy over who built this massive stone structure and how remains intense, but simple mathematics brings the mystery into sharper focus. Experts estimate that the pyramid contains a total of two and a half million stone blocks, ranging in size from two to 40 tons. Chronicles of the Times report the construction took 20 years. But how could such a gigantic monument be built so quickly? Now let's divide 2.5 million stone blocks by 20. And we can do 125,000 blocks every year. How many days a year have they been working? Let's say 300 days a year. OK, so we have a daily output of 416 blocks. And how many hours have they been working? There were no unions in those days, let's say 12 hours a day. That's a long day. Finally, we have every hour 34 blocks. And if we divide it down to the minutes, in fact, every two minutes, one block. To me, this is impossible. I believe the Great Pyramid was built by human beings, but with help from extraterrestrials. It's the only way our relatively primitive ancestors could create something we could perhaps not duplicate even today. There are many theories about how such a massive structure was built 5,000 years ago. As the debate rages, the pyramids of Egypt stand silently, sentinels of the past, forever guarding their mysteries. <laughs>